on this episode of Show Par 4, the podcast, we take it back, way back. As a boss man himself, Show Par 4 CEO Bobby DeMeo joins us. We talk a little bit about his history, where he grew up, how he got into uh, the golf business, as well as how Show Par 4 got started. If you love origin stories, it doesn't get any better than this. Oh, yes, Muffy. Look, another golf podcast. Yes, let's be quiet and reserved. Uh, no. This is the Short Par 4 Podcast. You'll hear stories and interviews from athletes to artists, from CEOs to chefs. All connected by the love-hate relationship with golf. You're listening to Short Par 4, the podcast. Welcome to probably one of the most important stories we will tell all year. We are here with special guest, Show Par 4 CEO, Bobby DiMeo. What's up, Jock? Hi, Robert. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? Good. So, I thought it very important that we start this magazine off front and center with a little bit about you, um, where it all started, where you grew up, a little bit about your history, and then kind of the evolution of Short Par 4 from beginning uh, to where we are now. <laughs> Born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Um, really didn't start playing golf till I was about 14 in high school. Um, you know, did the little summer camps here and there as a junior golfer. I think it was more for my parents just to get rid of me for a couple <laughs> hours. Um, started playing golf in high school. Didn't make the junior varsity team. Yeah. Um, you know, but found such a passion for the game, getting to be outside, getting, you know, just to, it was fun for friends to get together and just yeah. whack the ball around. Yeah. Um, took it a little bit more serious as became a sophomore, um, started taking lessons. I think I got down to probably a 10 handicap, um, made the junior varsity team, played a little bit of varsity as a sophomore. Yeah. I think they felt bad for me um, <laughs> as a six man. Um, switched high schools my junior year yeah. and played golf on the varsity team there in high school. Also played baseball. Um, baseball just involved everything I didn't want to do <laughs> uh, when it came to working out and Too training. Much um <laughs> So yeah, so I just you know kept going with it, and uh, I think by the end of my senior year, I was probably like a six handicap yeah. right around there. Um, you know, high school is all nine hole matches. Yeah. Uh, finished high school and figured I had to make a decision. Yeah. I wasn't good enough to play D one golf. Um, I could probably go play somewhere on the East Coast where it snows all the time and you're hitting balls into the yeah. net. Yeah. Um, decided to go to the San Diego Golf Academy. Yeah. And I think that's where things really changed. I took advantage of all the all the swing aids and instruction I was able to get. Um, and I went from a six to a plus two in two year in a year and a half. Oh shit. Um, and that's where it kinda of like, oh well maybe I you yeah. know, as every other you yeah. know, scratch golfer is like, oh maybe I can play golf for a living. Uh, that didn't quite Yeah pan out um, I, I mean look I think everybody in this office had that dream at some point yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ended up caddying on the Hooters tour for a very close friend of mine who was also my swing coach at the time oh, a no after shit. I graduated uh, his name is Kevin Hayes um, carrying a bag in the middle of summer in the south wasn't the most enjoyable <laughs> thing uh, did it for about three months and was it was was a full-on staff bag Full, full, on, full on pro, all leather casco oh staff God. bag. One one strap, one strap. Oh my God, that's brutal. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I just wasn't in top <laughs> top shape back then. Um, well, props to those guys. Those bags are heavy. Yeah, they I are. mean, if, if you look at everybody says like, oh, Phil's calves. If you look at some of the caddies on tour, yeah, those guys are fit. Yeah, I mean to carry around that. I it's kind of like an offensive lineman. In, yeah. in the NFL, you're like, oh, he's fat. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah, it's. A, I mean, it's a 40, 50 pound bag. Yeah, there. It's it, no. And then in the does. summertime, it rains, and so you have rain yeah. gear and all that. So, yeah. um, you know, left doing that, and honestly, moved to Las Vegas, um, where I was promoting nightclubs. 
got oh, completely out of golf, was burnt out, didn't want to do anything with golf. Um, that was a different time in my life, <laughs> for sure. Uh, we're we're going to come back on the next podcast and talk about Bobby's, uh, yeah. Bobby's nightlife uh, in Vegas. Um, but yeah, so Vegas was great. I, did, I ended up there for about six months, and I had an unfortunate accident where a friend of mine who was actually living with me ended up passing away in a boating accident. Oh, shit. And it brought me back to what my passion was, which was golf. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a wake-up call. Um, moved back to Los Angeles, and <clears throat> within a year, started a company called Caddy Connection. We brokered caddies across the country to different uh, private clubs, different charity events, PGA Tour programs, LPGA programs, all of that. Um, it was awesome, a lot of fun to do something that you're so passionate about. I didn't want to be a head pro. I didn't yeah. want to be an assistant. I didn't really want to teach. Yeah. Um, but you knew you wanted to participate in some I, I some, wanted to be somewhere. involved in golf so yeah. one way or another. So ran that. Uh, things were good. Got to do a lot of fun golf tournaments. Got yeah. to meet a lot of really cool people. Create a lot of great relationships. Uh, in 2008, kind of when the recession hit, golf and private clubs became yeah, a yeah, secondary yeah, thing. Sure. So that was like the first thing people got rid of. Yeah. Uh, once that happened, I, the business kind of was slowing down I went into more of the tournament space so uh, so but give me an example of, of what that like so just anybody that needs caddies like explain, yeah so, so, that a bit to me. so the farmers pro-am at Torrey Pines okay. uh, they have two different pro-ams they have a Monday and a Wednesday the Monday had about 144 players the Wednesday because they have two courses had about 300 players oh. and so they all need every every player gets their own caddy so we would provide all the caddies. Oh, gotcha. gotcha. So we ended up having about 2,400 caddies in our database across the country. Uh, caddy would sign up, fill out their online calendar. A yeah. job would come in. It would shoot right out to them. Oh, awesome. They would be able to accept it or reject it. They showed up, worked the job. They got paid. Um, it was cool, a really cool business. I think I was a little early in the tech yeah. part of it where I just didn't understand technology. Um, we were the first platform online to book caddies uh but like i said it was you know uh i mean it was a five cent website yeah i mean it just wasn't it it, it wasn't as technologically advanced as it, sh it needed to be and i just never cared to learn the tech side of it yeah. i just knew i was doing something in golf and i loved it and who yeah, cares? i mean i mean to be fair you're also a kid at that time and if it seems to be working you just roll with it yeah yeah there's no I, I wasn't about to go hire some you yeah. know, CTO yeah. to come in and build me this beautiful website yeah. that was going to cost me hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars. I was 24, 25 years old, yeah. living a dream. I mean, for me, it was being able to wake up every day, talk golf, breathe golf, I played golf whenever I wanted. Um, I ended up living, I was living down in San Diego for a few years. It was awesome. So 2008 rolled around, things kind of slowed down. Um, honestly, I had a little sick and tired of babysitting. Um, it was got to a point where I think we grew probably a little bigger than I thought it was going <laughs> to yeah. get to. Um, didn't really have the wherewithal to, you know, I hired friends. You yeah. know, we didn't go out and hire CMOs and yeah. CFOs and yeah. all that stuff. Uh, some of the best experience I've ever had in my life. I learned way more being hands-on than I would have in a yeah, classroom. For sure. Uh, took a break, I guess you can call it. Um, I a gap moved, here. yeah, I mean, I moved <laughs> back to California or LA. Uh, member at Wilshire Country Club, lived, moved into the apartment building right across the street. I knew I just wanted to play golf oh, wow. uh, and hang out. And so for two years, I literally sold everything and anything I could on eBay. <laughs> uh, Hustler, you name it. I was going to outlet malls, buying things flipping them on eBay. Yeah. I was going to Ross, Marshalls, Burlington, same thing. I was, you know, just yeah. didn't matter. I, I, if I can make money doing it, I was selling it. Yeah. Um, and for me, I had one goal. My only goal was to make sure my country club bill was paid every yeah. single month yeah. so I can play golf. Um, downside to that is you rack up some hefty <laughs> credit card <laughs> debt. Um, but it didn't matter. I mean, I, like I said, I, I was always going to figure it out. Because I knew it involved my passion of what I wanted to do. So as long as I knew 
that direction. I was I I had no doubt in my mind. I've always been a risk taker. No doubt in my mind. I was going to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, fast forward a little bit. Um, friends of myself and my brother. They started a company called Five Four. Um, Andres and D. We knew them since they were a t-shirt company. Um, that's the so that's the Menlo Club dudes. Menlo Club isn't what they're known as today. Yeah. Um, knew them right at their senior project, I believe, at USC was Five Four. That's their, oh, no shit. their business school. Uh, they were a t-shirt brand. We rocked Five Four every day, every time we could. Yeah. Uh, it was great. It was cool to, to know them and see how they run their business and stuff like that. And then, you know, they became a subscription model. I'm not sure the exact year, but it was probably 2000. Probably 2012 ish, um, 2013. And at that point, I started thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, there's got to be an opportunity for this space in golf. Golf is extremely expensive. Um, it doesn't need to be, yeah. but it is. And it was. Uh, so I have a really close friend of mine, and today is my business partner, Martin Haas. Um, Shout out, Martin. Yes, sir. Uh, took a flight out to Florida and said, hey, I got an idea. He had way more money than I did. <laughs> definitely didn't have definitely didn't have the credit card debt that I yeah. had. So um, we agreed to give it a go. Yeah. Uh, the idea was, hey, I need $20,000 to start a business. I think it was a week later I said, I think we need $250,000. <laughs> <laughs> After you burned through the first twenty quickly, oh, yeah. Shit. Thanks for being my friend, Martin. Okay, so how uh, how nervous was that second discussion though when you had to go back? It was nerve wracking, <laughs> uh, for sure. I mean, look, at the end of the day, we both agreed that the idea was good. Yeah. Um, I think it kind of went back to my early caddy connection days, of okay, you and I aren't the technology people. Yeah. Right, and you have a great understanding of finance I have a great understanding of the idea and the business model but I think we're gonna need some help here yeah um, short par 4 was started in 2014 uh, the first year was as big of a struggle as you can imagine yeah. um, I was still living in LA I was spending two weeks in Florida two weeks in LA two weeks Shit. in Florida two weeks in LA and it definitely tested our friendship as well. Yeah. Um, as I was living in his house, um, you know, luckily for Martin, he was a bachelor at the time <laughs> and didn't have to deal with any, you know, much of anything else yeah. on on that front. Um, you know, I was very gracious that I didn't have to come here and get a hotel and stay in a hotel for two weeks. Yeah. Uh, after year one, we kind of took a look at this and said, you know, do we? keep going do we do oh, it was that much of a struggle yeah I mean we had 70 members after year one 78 I think it was after, after year one um, and our model was a little different our model um, was just like every short par four has two options you can go forward or you can lay up yeah. we kind of had that model uh, you either got the layup box or you got the more aggressive box yeah. and the layup box was Get a box of golf apparel, keep what you want, pay for what you keep, send the rest back. Okay. And the more aggressive box was a quarterly box that you paid $250 for every quarter, and you got all this product. Yeah. Um, the quarterly box was really about 10, 12 people, and it was all family and friends. It was yeah. just like, <laughs> hey, we'll help you out. Yeah. The layup box is what we called it at the time. We just got too much inventory. It worked but we didn't have an outlet for inventory. So we kind of said, okay, this, and at the end of year one, we looked at it and said, I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah. I mean, we have all this inventory. We can't put it back in the box. Um, so with the help of a few friends and talking to some different people, we got in touch with uh, a gentleman named Brent Freeman, who at the time, I think the company was called Stealth Social. Yeah. Um, and it was a friend of mine from Wilshire uh, who put me in touch with Brent. Yeah. And uh, actually, the first meeting I ever had with Brent was, I was like, dude, you're great, you're smart, you're brilliant. 
how much <laughs> I, there is no way this is going to be within our budget yeah you know uh, so it was good I mean we, we we talked about three or four times and we just, that we came up with an idea of how we can make it work yeah uh, they wanted to change our model they wanted to change the website change things a little bit we were very hesitant but obviously knew we had to do something yeah launched our first month working with them uh, we brought on 257 new members oh, in one, in one month which was three times yeah. what we did yeah. all of last year and it just kind of snowballed from there it kept going uh, it was it was an awesome experience working with them yeah. we still work with them today uh, they are very knowledgeable when it comes to the digital marketing yeah. side of the business yes that was great um, and I mean, they're actually part owners of our business, yeah. uh, so it's great. They're shout out if you're looking for a digital marketing stealth venture labs, little shout out there. Yeah, great. Yeah, Brent Freeman, him and his team are awesome. Yeah. So yeah, so we. Kept but 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 backtrack for me now. So you you sell seventy boxes the first year, and then all of a sudden in the first month you have two fifty. So walk me through the, a bit of that. Like emotional, because for obviously for grinding that long for a year and getting what like six members a month. So all of a sudden, Get getting like two hundred and fifty. So, did you guys have did you have the processes in place? Was it like oh shit, like it's happening? Like as as an entrepreneur, there's obviously some time when you think like okay, after you're getting beaten down, now they step in and this is happening. Like there must be some real gratification to be like oh shit, like all right, this this can work. There was more of an oh shit, how are we going to pack that many boxes? <laughs> uh, Martin and I used to pack all the boxes, and I say all of them, it was 70 something a month, right? Yeah. It would take us forever. <laughs> you, you would be so surprised how long it would take you to pack 70 boxes. I mean, the, the days of having our friends, girlfriends, their yeah. friends yeah. all come to the warehouse and have packing parties where you know we're drinking beer, wine, yeah. eating cheese and <laughs> staying there till 2 in the morning packing boxes was a ton of fun. But that's what it became. Yeah. It was like, "Whoa, what is this? Like how how do we have two like how do we even pack 257 boxes?" Yeah. Um which is crazy to think uh, with, with our current membership uh that it's you know, at that time 250 seemed like holy shit, like, how do we do this? Yeah, I mean, we packed 257 boxes in less than an hour now. Yeah. But at the time, it took us 10 days. Yeah. You know, it just <laughs> and just understanding the product, understanding what, what can go in a box, understanding, yeah. you know, the pick and pack process of yeah. why are you putting a shirt in this box that's across the warehouse? Why isn't that shirt closer to the box? Yeah. Just to make, you know, cut down on time, yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, it was, uh, those were fun days. Not that, I mean, I love, absolutely, absolutely love what I do now. Um, the, the way I looked at it was when the phone rang, Martin and I answered it. Yeah. When it came to packing a box, Martin and I did it. Yeah. When it came to talking about a new partnership, Martin and I handled it. Yeah. When it came to paying the bills, Martin and I did it. So when you look back on it now, you're just like, you're sitting there like, wow, that's pretty interesting but we've done every facet of the business, you know? So the, you know, starting off then with only about four or five brands was also a struggle as we started to grow a little bit. It's like, well, damn, we can't get Under Armour. Yeah. Damn, we can't get Adidas. Yeah. Damn, we can't get so-and-so. And it's like, those are the brands we want. And it wasn't until about 2016 when we started adding a new member every seven minutes for about a whole Shit. year, it was it was absolutely insane. Um, we actually had to turn the the notifications off on our on our phone because they were beeping left. It was beeping like crazy. Um, That's a good problem to have. And it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. Stealth was killing it. We were killing it. We were hiring people. Uh, you know, I got our current COO today, Tad Frost, to drive cross country and come work for us for ten dollars an hour. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, actually stole him away from he was working for my dad at the time <laughs> in Southern California uh, so you know we just started going and getting people yeah. um, we had no choice it was growing so fast which is good and bad yeah. it was good the business is doing great it was a lot, a lot more headaches it was a struggle because we broke every process we had 
we every system we had in place was no longer the right system. Yeah. Um, yeah, growing pains. You know, but I will take those all day long and figure it out. Yeah. So, you know, as we kept growing and kept going, the team was, you know, getting bigger and better. And, uh, you know, it it became so much fun for everybody involved, I think. Yeah. Um, I don't – I can't remember anybody saying, oh, it's not fun at all working at Short Part 4. Yeah. You know, um uh, but yeah, man, it's uh, you know we're turned six in April. Uh, we we have all our vendors that we want to have on there. You know, we we have great relationships with Puma, Under Armour, Callaway, Travis Matthew, Adidas, um, all the ones that make noise in the golf space. Um, our team has grown tenfold. You know, it's crazy. I think we're up to sixteen or seventeen people now. Yeah, uh, we're adding another warehouse. You know, we took fulfillment back. You know, just things like that. When you look at what you've done over the last six years of what worked, what hasn't worked, the ability to call an audible, switch it up, make the change, but it honestly comes down to the right team. We have the right team in place, and I I personally think this is the best group of people we've had working at Short Par 4 from day one. Yeah. I mean, this is it. I mean, this is our team that we're going to get to that next level with. And talking about the next level, so what do you see, you know, in the, in the next five years? What what do you see forward and in, in the kind of the future for Short Part 4? Well, there's a couple things that are going to be, you know, being announced and coming out soon that we probably don't want to just mention <laughs> quite yet. I tried uh, to get the inside scoop here, people. I tried. I tried. I got shut down. You know, the, the subscription game is going to be – always evolving yeah. um, if we're not innovative if we're not evolving we're going to get lapped and you know today when we started the company six years ago we were kind of first to market in our space um, and today there's you know there's a couple other companies doing it and you know what competition's great Com yeah. there's you know you see a McDonald's you see a Burger King across the street and you see a Wendy's on the other corner uh, competition is not a bad thing. Yeah. I, I look at it as an opportunity for us to go out and work harder and compete. Um, so in the next five years, I think it's just that. It's it's being innovative. It's coming up with ways to offer new product. Um, I'm looking forward to, to partnering with new brands that have great product to be able to showcase what that looks like and yeah. that – you know, as much as we love our big box brands, that there's other golf brands out there that do a great job, may not have the marketing budget to, you know, uh, somebody in the middle of the country may not see, you know, how great such and such brand is, but, yeah. you know, there's... But the product's high quality. There's a lot of really yeah, good stuff sure. out there. So, for you sure. know, I think that's our job. Um, people look to us for style, value, and convenience. Um and we, over the next, between now and the next five years, need to, need to deliver on those and will. Yeah. Um, and just keep innovating. Uh, with, you know, there could be some stuff with some hard goods coming down the line here. Uh, you know, just some product you can't put in a box. Yeah. But we have an unbelievable membership. Our membership is very active in what we do. We Best members ever. Yeah, they're great. We have our surveys that go out every month. We have an unbelievable amount of people that reply to them each month. The hearing from them is what I actually enjoy going back and look. And, and it's not always good, which is fine because I think the it's you can't just have positive comments all the yeah. time. Um, now, if you just have negative comments, that's yeah. a problem. Uh, but I think overall, you know, like I said, goes back to the team. Uh, we have such a great team, and we will handle every situation, however it's thrown at yeah. us. So, talk, talk to me a little bit about the magazine. So, obviously, you know, if you look at you know golf brands, or you know, this is kind of out of the ordinary. This isn't something that you know a lot of people do. Um, we kind of took the risk to kind of not only diversify to our, our product that we send, but kind of give a voice to what we do. Uh, talk to me a little bit about your excitement about the magazine and kind of what do you think that's going to bring, uh, you know, not just for our members, but, but, but to anyone that's going to kind of read it. 
to me, it's a complete game changer. The I'm so excited about the magazine. I think it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a different read. I think it's going to be an easy read. Yeah. The idea behind not your granddaddy's toilet <laughs> magazine yeah. anymore, um, which a lot of the print magazines have become. This is going to be a little bit edgier, a little bit catered towards the person who wants to read it but wants to get enjoyment out of golf and not just looking for instruction or, hey, can I go here and play golf? Yeah. Uh, we've partnered with great brands that aren't your typical golf brands, uh, different Instagram accounts. Uh, you know, I, I just think that when people go through the magazine – they're going to have a total different experience than reading any other magazine yeah. they've ever read. And that's what I'm super excited about. Well, uh, I know you're a busy man, so I want to thank you for your time. Yeah, thank um, you. We are super excited for this magazine and super excited what's uh, what's ahead for Short Bar 4. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to Martin Haas, business partner, whose son is battling cancer right now, two years old. Uh, just had a successful surgery last week. Let's go! And uh, it's continuing to fight every day. So keep going, Liam. We love you guys. You've been listening to Short Par 4, the podcast. Yes, a golf podcast with a little bit of an edge. We hope you've had fun. And be sure to check out the magazine at shortpar4.com slash the magazine. Short Par 4, the podcast. Brought to you by the guys that have been delivering golf style to your doorstep since 2015. We'll see you next time. <laughs>